After spending several years in the open ocean, feeding and growing, these salmon are returning home. And what they're bringing back benefits an entire ecosystem. Along the west coast of North America, heavy autumn rains have transformed small streams into roaring rivers, allowing millions of salmon to migrate inland in order to spawn. After spending years in the open ocean, these fish return to their natal streams, where they were born. It's thought that salmon navigate using the Earth's magnetic field and are able to recognize the smell of their home stream allowing them to return within meters of where they emerged from their egg. They return to their natal stream because they know it's a great place to spawn, and subsequently don't spend unnecessary time and energy searching for a mate or adequate spawning habitat. As salmon leave the ocean and enter freshwater, they stop feeding and begin deriving all their energy from stored fats. During the salmon's upriver migration, their bodies undergo distinct physical transformations. Their silver-blue scales are replaced with bright reds, greens, and purples, and males develop a prominent hump and hooked jaw. These salmon who have survived to return home have beaten insurmountable odds. A single female salmon lays roughly 4,000 eggs, However, after hatching and facing endless obstacles and constant predation while migrating downriver, then traversing the ocean for several years and migrating back upriver, an average of only two will return to create the next generation. After traveling upwards of a thousand kilometers inland to spawn, the lives of these salmon come to an end. But even in death, this keystone species continues to give. An adult salmon returning to spawn contains roughly 130 grams of nitrogen and 20 grams of phosphorus. These nutrients greatly benefit the ecosystem surrounding salmon-bearing waterways. Research has shown that vegetation along the banks of salmon-bearing waterways grow over three times faster than rivers without salmon. For example, a Sitka spruce only requires 86 years rather than the usual 300 years to grow to a thickness of 50 centimeters. The relationship between salmon and trees goes even further. Consider how the roots of vegetation grip and hold soil in place. During the heavy rains needed for salmon to navigate these streams, the roots of streamside trees and undergrowth vegetation prevent rainwater from eroding soil and introducing sediment into the waterway, which is incredibly important as excessive sedimentation is lethal for salmon eggs. It's not only the tree's roots that benefit salmon. The shadows cast by these towering giants cloak the stream and prevent the sun's rays from warming the water to temperatures deadly for any life stage of salmon ensuring the survival of the next generation and reinforcing that salmon need trees and trees need salmon.